Well, it's a little bit after six. We've spotted the 300 elk down here that's feeding right now. We're now headed boogie down there. Dude, I'm shaking. Holy crap. Oh my god. That was cool, dude. That happened so fast. Should we shoot him again? That happened so I mean, fast. I know he's he B12 right now, the last shot, but he's still. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I can take that camera.
happened. Oh, that happened so perfectly. You're a freaking stud, dude. Oh, you too, Brian. It's tough killing an animal, huh? It's on a smoke. I don't know how else to say it. It's, it's a serious thing. Excuse me. It's a serious thing to take another animal's life. And sometimes when you have to watch them suffer a little bit, that's not easy. Especially when that's your first archery elk bull kill. They just don't go down easy. No, elk are so tough. They just don't, and it's, it's terrible to have to, you know, to put another arrow, have to follow up with the shot, but. But that's what you have to do. I wouldn't want him to suffer. I'd hope you'd put me out, Brian, if I was suffering. Oh, I'd put you down. <laughs> oh, that was incredible. He's right there. Oh, awesome. I so mean, welcome to. You didn't quite get the bugle fast? Oh, that couldn't have worked out any better. Oh my gosh, dude, I didn't know what to do when he started bugling. I was at full draw in his face. <laughs> when he kind of right over the vitals and my pins are right on him he's just screaming I'm like oh god <laughs> I had to hold so steady that was awesome oh. I was just sitting there 45, 45 nice shot Jordan I mean a lot of pressure oh. and fast and there was first bull elk with a bow oh. and I you know what guys and I said come in here and we just saw a, a bigger bull oh behind him but I said it from the beginning and I was gonna stick to my word I knew there were big bulls in here but for my first elk any opportunity that was given to me I was not gonna pass and I said that before I got here to myself and to everyone and that was quite an opportunity and I wasn't gonna pass it up you can't that okay. was a great setup that was wind was good best shot like opportunity you could have yeah nice and calm there was not a rush no you both were awesome too just calling out good that was a good, that was a good team. I'm going to give Brian the credit there. Oh, good call. He called the ridge. I mean, he had absolutely no idea we were here. It was Jordan. Killed. We have an elk down. <laughs> it's the first morning. I know. <laughs> this is ridiculous. But it looks like. Jordan's got some freaking luck, and he just put his first archery bowl on the ground. That's so sweet. I cannot wait to see this. <laughs> we got an elk, Brian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an awesome elk. And an incredible, incredible experience that I will never forget. And I'm grateful to have shared with friends. Um, that was cool. <laughs> He's pretty. came into 45 yards so I just put my 45 right where it needed to be and I stroked it right after he had got done bugling in our face he ducked the string but I, I hit him and we dropped him and so we put another one and got another one in him and that one is that one really did him in but these he was fighting for life I mean these animals Elk are some of the toughest animals on earth in my opinion. They will not stop. He was perfect, man. That was a that was your textbook elk hunting experience. <laughs> you know what I'm so happy about too? Besides how freaking cool that experience was, is I've only got like I think I counted eight steaks left for my bull from last year. My wife and I just burned through that. That was the big thing. She's like, you need to get the freezer full again. I'm super thankful right now. Very thankful.
I love that knife. It's cool, huh? Yes. I uh, I can say that from the Havilon. Well, yep, from the Havilon to this one, which is the Taito knife. Yep. Or Tito. I, the Tito. Is that how you say it properly? You know what? We like Taito. Taito Tito. Tito Tito. Tito sounds, you know. Potato potato. Uh, I love the handle on this. I love that curve. That fits really. I just like good. how it stays cleaner. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. Well done. Got it done. Well, this snow is awesome. And, uh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so far, this? my experience in Montana is that, um, it's freaking cold and you freeze your keister off. That's <laughs> pretty much how Montana works. That was a cool morning. Tanner hooked us up. Brought us into the honey hole, made it happen. Man, this wind here like feels like a thousand off. needles, man. Yeah, little ice chunks. That's awesome. Get to the <laughs> Got him. Dude. Dude, we did it. Oh. Nice work. I Look at that. You. Good point, Aaron Snyder. First thing I see, I'm going to kill. <laughs> I was not. Look at that. Yeah. We hiked in to that spot. We dropped down into this draw where they usually kind of file into when they come up and over the top. Brian's like, dude, let's just go one more higher. Like, I feel like they're just going to, if that guy's still there or left, the other ones we're hearing, like, they're going to come over here. Sure enough, dude. So I, as I'm drawing back, I get set and he looks up because he sees movement and then he looks back down and I'm like, oh, sweet. So I put my pin on him. Right as I put my pin on the sweet spot, he turns his head and <laughs> throws out a freaking bugle. So I'm just watching the show through my sights. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so primos. <laughs> okay, okay, move your head. And so he moves his head back and puts it down. And right as he does that, I just set the pin and just boom and you hear it just smack and he drops, but he ducked and he ducked and it came up a little bit higher and I hit his spine. Oh, you spined him. So he dropped. That's good for tracking. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you should see the red carpet he left. Dumped and then he just did like two rolls. So he broke my arrow off, did two rolls and then tried to start getting back up. And so then I just, he gave me another range. So I just went like this and just, just, right in the boiler room, like hit him right where he needed to. And then he just he just made his way, dude, and elk are so dang tough. He just kept going for a ways and we just and then we just watched him die. It was kind of emotional. It was tough to watch him suffer for a little bit, but it was it was pretty cool. <laughs> it was so I was That's so awesome. Freaking.
Well, I can hear elk bugling, can you? Yeah. I hear elk bugling over the hill there. What are we, I think we've been here about two hours, maybe? Yeah, I'd probably say. Yeah, the weather's getting kind of nasty, which is good. I'm hoping it does. So we're laying low here, uh, waiting for these elk to come into this field. And hopefully they come back because we spooked them with the truck when we drove in. But it sounds like they're getting closer. I can hear them bugling their way in. So I think it's about 6.30. They sound like they're coming in on that side, not this side. So who knows? But you never know once they hit this alfalfa what they're going to do. They came in down here. And I think that um, Dallas and I might be able to belly crawl or like crab walk our way along this this bush line if we see him getting ready to come over to that side I think we got a lot of cover we can get down there what do you think about this form of elk hunting is this not tripping you out dude you know what like like are we hunting elk or are we hunting city bucks you know what this reminds me of this reminds me of some prime Arizona draw tag <laughs> where you just kind of go out and sit water holes or pinch points or or wallows or something and you just wait and there's like 200 elk that come through with giant bulls screaming and fighting and just chaos yeah. and you're just like hoping something comes near you that's this kind of hunting so I'll take it dude any day of the week this is awesome <laughs> I feel totally blessed to be here because that Colorado experience was epic. But this is just a different experience. And uh, it's different not charging in on them and bugling and calling and chasing them, you know. But um, you use different tactics for different elk in different places, you know. So it's, it's awesome. Jordan shot his bull this morning, and it was just picture perfect i mean couldn't have asked for a better better hunt this morning better shot opportunity that that definitely felt like like hunt colorado this morning but this right here this is different but um i think the hardest part is just not freezing your butt off it's cold it's cold Thank you for watching this gritty film. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I've got some good news for you. We're kicking off five weeks of gritty hunting films and we're calling this thing the open season. Folks, I have some amazing partners and they've all decided to chip in to give me some stuff to give to you. For the next five weeks, we got Mountain Ops, we got Leupold, we got Sitka, we got Yeti, we got Hoyt, we got Crispy. We got Black Eagle. But wait, we're not done yet. We're also gonna give away some Kafaru and some Garmin gear as well. Folks, 
That's more than $20,000 in gear. I can't thank my partners enough. There are five ways to win every week. First, like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment below. And then, stalk us on Facebook and Instagram because that's what those apps are for. Next, go to briancall.com and sign up for our newsletter and you will be entered to win a brand new Hoyt bow. And finally, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Listen to the Gritty Podcast and leave us a review on iTunes. At the end of the five weeks, we're going to give away a sweet Kafaru pack and a Garmin inReach to some lucky winner. For all the open season details, go to briancall.com forward slash open season. And as always, Stay gritty.